Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Damien's Market Update, the show where I talk about what's been going on in investment markets and what to look out for in the days and weeks ahead. Now, before I start with the show, please, if you find this video or any of the previous videos that we've done helpful, make sure you give them a thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, you can leave questions in the comments. I am answering those questions. If you look at the last video from uh, a month ago, you will notice that I went through and answered people's questions that they put in there because it helps to keep the narrative and dialogue going and give you more and more insight. So last month's episode was titled Equity and Bond Markets Breakdown, which was a pretty good summary of what we were experiencing as we entered the month of May. Now, at that time, the FTSE 100 had fallen to 7345, but remained above its 200-day moving average in an uptrend dating back to 2021. And as such, it remained the star performer in terms of stock market returns in 2022. I'll give you a quick hint, that still is the case as we go into June. But back in May, we're at a point where the S&P 500 continued to struggle by comparison and had fallen to 4,021. Rallies were still being faded by investors more quickly each time, in fact, suggesting there was less and less conviction on a sustainable US stock market rebound. Plus, we also began to see a divergence between the US and European equities as a result of the divergence in monetary policy between the central banks. So I'm talking about the US Federal Reserve, who I call the Fed throughout these videos, and the European Central Bank, who I often call uh, the ECB. Now, the ECB is typically more dovish, and it always has been than the Fed. And it's one of the reasons that we've seen European equities hold up better and not revisit their March lows, unlike US equities. Now, elsewhere in bond markets, they were taking a bit of a bruising. So by way of an example, the 10-year US Treasury yield burst higher towards 3.2%, meaning the value of that 10-year note was tumbling. Now, the traditional bond equity portfolio continued to get a hammering, to be honest, as we entered May. And May got off to a bad start as the strong currency moves that we saw towards the end of April ultimately bled over into equity markets, dragging them lower. And US stocks, in particular the large tech stocks, bore the brunt of that selling we saw. And the Nasdaq was down as much as 8.44% during the month of May before staging a bit of a recovery. Now, the divergence between the fortunes of the German DAX and the S&P 500 did continue. And in fact, we saw the S&P 500 set a new 2022 low, whereas the German DAX proved much more resilient alongside some other select European equity markets, in fact, and of course, the FTSE 100 as well. And the FTSE 100 continues to be one of the strongest equity markets this year, thanks to its lack of technology stock exposure, but also it benefits from its exposure to those high flying energy stocks. But what has been particularly interesting during the month of May has been the movements in bond markets. So at the start of May, we saw bond markets falling in tandem with equity markets. That means yields were spiking and that is all because of the stagflation fear. So fears over slowing economic growth alongside fears of rising inflation. And those fears grew and that actually tested investors' resolve. However, by mid-month, bonds began to behave as they did pre-2022 whenever equity markets slumped. And that meant that we saw money rush into government bonds in particular, pushing their prices up. So they began acting as portfolio diversifiers once again. And you may recall last time I explained how the interaction between the market fear of inflation versus the fear over a lack of economic growth would probably be a catalyst to see a change in the trends that have been going on in 2022. Well, that is what we pretty much got because bonds also started to become attractive because the fear of global growth slowing actually started to be greater than the fear of inflation. So it started to be very supportive for bonds. And it did feel like that global growth fear had finally hit markets. And we saw equity markets take a bit of a wobble because don't forget, that economic growth is closely linked to profitability of companies. So therefore, if you feel there's going to be some kind of recession, it tends to be negative for the majority of equities. But as the month of May drew to a close, there was a late rally for equity markets, and they ended up finishing the months broadly flat, 
with the outperformers being Japanese equities, German equities, and UK equities, while US stocks, and particularly US tech stocks, continue to lag. And Japanese equities have been boosted from the strong dollar versus the weaker yen. And that exchange rate, in fact, has hit a 20-year low, meaning that the yen has hit a 20-year low against the US dollar. And that gives exporters in Japan a boost. And so their share price therefore rallies as they become more attractive. And again, that divergence of the monetary policy between the key central banks, in this case, the US Federal Reserve and the Bank of Japan, is having an influence on currency markets. And it's therefore also having an influence on stock markets as well. And as we enter June, there was also some optimism for stock market investors, which started to ironically emanate from the bond market. So this is why bond market moves became interesting once again. Now, back in 2020, after the pandemic crash, we saw investment grade corporate bonds given an early indicator that the stock market had hit a bottom and was about to rebound. Now, if you Google LQD, you will see a chart of a particular ETF that tracks investment grade corporate bonds. And back in 2020, that chart started to show a rebound from a slump after the pandemic that preempted a rally in equity markets. Now, in May this year, we saw a similar rebound start to appear. So we've had a slump in that investment grade ETF. And we saw an uptick in May. And we then started to see equity markets rally. But unfortunately, we didn't see the LQD double down on that early indicator or that signal. And as a result, we saw it start to break down again. And equity markets have also continued to slump. So maybe it's too early to call the bottom of the market at the moment. So it means that we start June in a similar position to that which we started May. So it's reasonable to expect the similar levels of volatility in bond and equity markets in the coming weeks. And that is in both bonds and equity markets. And don't forget that June also includes key central bank policy meetings. So the European Central Bank, the ECB, had met today and announced that they are intending to, in the near future, hike interest rates for the first time in a decade to try and quell inflation. So that is likely to have an impact on markets in the coming days. Meanwhile, the Fed and the Bank of England are going to announce their own monetary policy decisions on the 15th and 16th of June. And just to give you a bit of insight, after the last two meetings by the US Federal Reserve, markets pivoted. And in both cases, they pivoted and we saw in one case a rally of 10% in the next two weeks. And in the other case, we saw markets tumble by 10% in the next two weeks. So there's nothing to suggest we're not going to see something similar after June's monetary policy decision. So perhaps it's a case of get your tin hat ready. So there is a sense that markets have been trying to consolidate over the last few weeks and they're looking for that sense of direction. And it's likely that the central bank decisions in the coming weeks could be that thing that gives markets that direction, whether it's up or down. And as for bond markets, they still seem pretty undecided about what they're going to worry about, whether it's higher inflation or whether it's actually about a possible global recession with the latter one, of course, potentially being supportive for bond markets. So for now, both bond and equity markets, things haven't got worse over the last month significantly, but they certainly haven't got better. So that's it for this show of Damien's Market Update. As ever, you can email me, damien at moneytothemasses.com. You can contact me via Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. But obviously, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel and like our video. But the best way to contact me is to write in the comments below this video. If you've got any questions or anything you want me to talk about on future shows, then pop it in there and I'll give you a response. Oh.